Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss CPC SEA guideline for laboratory animal facility. CPC SEA stand for Committee for the Purpose of Control and Supervision on Experiments on Animal. So this is a central committee which take watch or which controls the experiments on animal. Now let's see what is this guideline. This guideline was established under chapter 4, section 15, 1 of Prevention of Cruelty to Animal Act 1960. It is a statutory committee, that is CPCSA is a statutory committee of Department of Animal Husbandry and Daring Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Daring Government of India. Now, this is the corresponding address of the CPCSA office and this guideline is available on the website cpcsa.nic.in under this campendium of CPCSA. All this material which I am going to discuss is directly taken from the CPCSA website and it is uh, simplified to understand the student the aim and objective and process of CPCSA. Now, what is the goal of CPCSA? The goal of this guideline is to promote the human care of animals used in biomedical and behavioral research and testing with the basic objective of providing specifications that will enhance animal well being, quality in the pursuit of advancement of biological knowledge that is relevant to human and animals. This is a goal. Now for every uh, animal house or animal facility, veterinary care is very much important. So under veterinary care, the daily observation of animal health is mandatory. Behavior as well and well-being of the animal has to be observed. The veterinarian which is appointed for the establishment. Now, as per the guideline, a full-time veterinarian is required. So, the veterinarian, apart from the observation, he can also help the establishment in designing the policies, procedures, and certain methods for the prevention and control of the disease, operative and post-operative care, diagnosis, and treatment of disease, as well as the injury. Veterinarian also helps in reviewing the protocols and proposals which are submitted to the IAC, animal husbandry and animal welfare. Also helps in monitoring occupational health hazards, containment, cont uh, containment and zoonosis control program. Veterinarian can also supervising the animal nutrition and sanitization. Then animal procurement, which is important part of animal uh, research. One has to procure the animal from a registered breeder. So there are certain requirements for procurement of the animal. And these are all the animals should be procured lawfully as suggested by the CPCSA guideline. All the animals should be procured from registered breeder who having the CPCSA registration and breeding license. Large animals can be procured as per the guidelines of wildlife department. Then cat can be bred for their uses. Rodents can be imported from abroad after necessary license from director general of foreign trade is obtained for import. So those animals which are obtained from the import, some transgenic and all these things. For them, it required the license from Director General of Foreign Trade. Then health surveillance program for screening to assess animal quality is important. Then method of transportation should also be taken into account. So whenever you procure the annual from any breeder or a foreign country, you need to follow this guideline. And then when you transport the animal, the vehicle should be air conditioner, which is required. And the 
primary screening about the health quality of the animal is also required. This table gives the specification for the different species of the animal while transporting by road, rail, and air. Number of maximum number of animal per cage while transporting it is given. Material used in transport box that is given. Then space per animal is given. Then minimum height of the box is given here. Apart from that, if you uh, procure cattle, buffalo, sheep, goat, and pigs as per the transport of animal amendment rule 2009, which is given, you can follow this rule. Then quarantine, stabilization, and separation. What is quarantine? Quarantine is the separation of newly animal, newly received animal from already available animal in the animal house. The advantages of quarantine is that it minimizes the chances of introduction of pathogens. As the animals procure from other establishment or other uh, environment, there is a chances that it will spread the infections to prevent that the quarantine is required. So before entering the animal into the actual animal house, a quarantine area can be developed where the animal is kept. For small animal, the quarantine period should be one week to one month. And for large animals, the quarantine period should be six weeks. So under small animal, rat, mice, these are considered. After quarantine, what is stabilization? Stabilization is also required for the physiological, psychological, and nutritional stabilization required because as the animal procured from other environment, the stability of animal is disturbed. So the animal should be psychological, physiological, stable for that stabilization is required. It depends on the type and duration of animal transportation, the species involved, and the intended use of the animal. Based on this, the stabilization is provided. Then physical separation is also required from animal to animal. This physical separation prevent interspecies disease transmission as the animals procured from another species or uh, in the in animal house also the animal can be separated that prevent the disease transmission. They eliminate the anxiety and physiological and behavioral changes which has developed in the different animal. This can be carried out by housing the different species in the separate rooms. So in animal house, you have to develop the separate room for rat, separate room for mice, separate room for rabbit, so that there should not be any anxiety or physiology or behavioral change observed. It is called as the physical separation. Then surveillance, diagnosis, treatment, and control of the disease is a very important part of this guideline. All animals should be observed for signs of illness. If they are in a, any illness or injury, that should be properly observed by the veterinary or the animal house in charge. Injury or abnormal behavioral by animal house staff. It is imperative that appropriate method be in place for disease surveillance and diagnosis. For observation, diagnosis, we have the animal house in charge should take care of this. And if it is observed, he or he has to uh, take the steps to control the disease or infection not to spread to the another animal. So under this uh, uh, diagnosis and treatment part, it is given that one has to go with the hematological data for different animal species. These are the normal range of the different bio biological or biochemical parameters. Then. Again, these are biochemical data that is protein, albumin for different animal. One has to uh, take the blood sample and evaluate uh, this uh, parameter to understand the abnormality in the animal. Then post-mortem examination and sign of illness, distress or other deviations for normal health condition in animal should be reported promptly. If it is observed any type of the signs of illness or distress, it should be reported promptly. Animals that show signs of contagious diseases should be isolated and euthanized to prevent its spread. If animal is showing any contagious diseases, it should be separated from the other animals. And if the condition is beyond 
the protect uh, safety level, then you can go with the euthanasia and prevent the spread of the animals. Preventive medicine program should be initiated uh, by the animal house. Disease surveillance is a major responsibility of the veterinarian and should include routine monitoring of colony animals for the presence of parasitic and microbiological agents that may cause overt or unappearent disease. So it is the part of our duty of the veterinarian to observe the disease surveillance and accordingly he has to take the care to prevent the spread of this, uh, micro, uh, this microbial uh, disease. Diagnostic laboratory services must be available and used as appropriate for easy diagnosis of the health. Uh, the diagnostic laboratory is recommended to be there in the near to animal house. Then uh, animal care and technical persons. So animal care program require technical and husbandry support, which is important. Institute should employ people trained in laboratory animal sciences. So for animal house in charge or the person who are taking care of all the animals should have experience, should have training in laboratory animal sciences and taking care of the animal facility. The qualification and knowledge which is required for the laboratory attendance is given in Annex 7 of the CPCSA guideline, which is available on CPCSA website, which is required or mandatory. Then personal hygiene, because a person who is going to take care of the animal has to take its own care. It is comes under the personal hygiene. So in personal hygiene, appropriate personal protective equipments, example, showers, change of uniforms, footwear, etc., should be provided. Then clothing should be supplied and laundered regularly and properly. So the uh, appropriate cloth which are uh, wear during the animal uh, care should be uh, laundered regularly and properly. It is acceptable to use disposable gloves, mask, head cover, coat, coveralls, and shoes cover while entering into the animal house. Personal should change clothing as often as it necessary to maintain personal hygiene. Washing and showering facilities appropriate to the program should be available at the animal house. Personal should not be permitted to eat, drink, smoke, or apply cosmetic and perfume in the animal house. So, one cannot use this uh, material or one cannot eat or drink any type of the things into the animal house. So this is what the protection which is required before entering to the animal house. Certain animal experiments which involve in the hazardous agent. So for hazardous agents, a specific uh, precautions is required. So it is recommended that Institute should uh, constitute institutional biosafety committee and the member of the committee having the knowledgeable about hazardous agents and in place in most of the highest level education, research institute and in many pharmaceutical industries for taking care of safety issues. So when the study involves the hazardous agents or is hazardous material, that institute, that establishment should uh, constitute the institutional biosafety committee, which will take care of the use of uh, this uh, hazardous material. Then multiple surgical procedure on single animal. If a multiple procedure has to be carried out on single animal, then what precautions are required? So unless specific in protocol only approved by the IAC. So if it is approved by the IAC, then only go with this uh, type of process. Individual animals should not be used in more than one experiment. This is important. Animals should be permitted to recover fully from the first experiment before the subsequent experiment is performed. So if you are done one experiment, then the animal is allowed to recover fully and then only you can use that animal subsequently for the next purpose. No animal should be used for experiment for more than three years unless adequate justified is justification is provided. So on an average, you can use this animal up to the three years. Now it is not permitted to use this animal more than three years for experimentation. Then physical restraint is very important. Restraint means holding the animal. 
so manually or with devices suitable in size and design for the animal can be used for restraining the animal like restrainers are available you cannot prolong the restraining process as they develop the distress less restrictive system such as theater system or the pole or collar system should be used when compatible with research objectives following point should be considered while restraining the animal handled by competent individual trained in method that causes minimal distress and injury this is important restraint device should be used to a minimum cannot hold for longer period of time it will produces the distress extend for the minimal period required to accomplish the purpose of the experiment and be approved for the animal then sometime the tranquilizers or anesthetics may be used while restraining the animal location of laboratory facility to laboratory animal house facility is very important so it is recommended that the animal house facility should be separated from personal area such as office break room training and educational room they should be housed in a isolated building located as far away from the human habituation another thing is that it should not exposed to dust smoke noise wild rodent insects and the birds the building cages and environment of animal room are the major factors which affect the quality of the animals and mainly this uh, animal house facility uh, location is important to maintain the quality of the animals which are used for the experimentation the animals room should occupy about 50 to 60% of total constructed area and the remaining area should be utilized for services such as stores washing office and staff machine room quarantine and court corridor so 50 to 60% area only used for keeping the animal and rest of the area you can use for these different purposes the environment of animal room like macro environment and the micro environment macro environment it is the room environment whereas micro environment it is the environment in the cage are the factors uh, with the production and experimental efficacy of the animal depends animals are very sensitive to environmental changes so sharp fluctuation in temperature humidity light sound and ventilation should be avoided then functional area where actual the uh, experiments is carried out it ensures separation of species or isolation of individual projects when necessary reuse quarantine and isolate animals are provide for animal housing in functional area specialized laboratories or individual areas contiguous with the near animal housing areas for surgery intensive care all these are required for equipments if hazardous biological physical or chemical agents are to be used then receiving and storage area for food bedding pharmaceuticals are required space for administration supervision and direction of the facilities also required then autoclave for equipment food and bedding and separate areas for holding soil and clean equipments is again required and area for repairing cages and equipments and area to store waste prior to incinerations are important so these are the functional area which are separate separate area required for separate separate functioning then under physical facility housing facility is uh, required for different species facilities are required for controlling the environment into the animal house then wall and floor should be constructed with with durable material then clean and tidy environment is required hygiene is required pest control program is uh, important to monitor then appropriate storage areas are required for food and bedding then deodorant uh, design designed to mask animal odor should not be used so in this physical facility you cannot use any type of deodorants or perfume to mask the uh, animal house odor there should be proper water supply and drainage system in the animal house there should be adequate contingency plan to cover such emergencies like flooding and fire breakdown of lighting you can have generator facility heating cooling and ventilation the external window should be required for ventilation unauthorized person should be restricted restricted 
will not allow the unauthorized person into the animal facility. These are the for certain material like building materials. They are they should be durable, moisture proof, fire resistant, seamless material use. Corridors, it's sufficient to move the person or the equipment. Utilities like water line, drain pipe, and electrical connection should be proper. Animal room doors, they are rust and dust proof, noise free. Then frames and door closers may be good. They will not, they should not produce any type of the noise which can disturb the animal facility. Then external windows are required which provides alternate source of light in case of the emergency. Floors, they monolithial or epoxy, smooth, moisture proof, non-absorbent type of the floors are required. Drains are required, wet vacuuming or mopping with appropriate disinfectant or cleaning compounds. Then floors should be sloped and drain taps. Water or corrosive free mesh drainage must be adequate to allow rapid removal of water and drying of the surface. Walls and ceiling in the animal house, they should be free of cracks, unsealed utility penetration, then floor and corner. Surface material should be capable of withholding scrubbing with detergents. Then storage area, storage area should be design, designed for feed, bedding, cages and material not in use. Refrigerated store storage separated from other cold storage is essential for storage of dead animal and animal tissue waste. Now the environment in the animal house plays an important role. One has to maintain the following specification in the animal house regarding temperature and humidity control. Temperature uh, approximate 18 to 29 degrees centigrade is required all the time in the animal house. The relative humidity will be 30% to 70% throughout the year is required. For large animal, a comfortable zone 18 to 37 degrees centigrade should be maintained. And nowadays there are uh, humidity control equipments are available, temperature control equipments are there. 12 hours light and 12 hours dark cycle can be maintained. Then ventilation, heating, ventilation and air conditioning system should be designed with 20 to 15 year cycle per hours to the operation can be continued with a standable system. Power and lighting, fluorescence lights are efficient and less than 400 lux is preferable for rodent facility, very important. Noise control, the facility should be provided with noise free environment. Then preferably less than 85 decibel is desirable for rodents and non-human primates. So, in animal house, this environmental control is very important for getting a good uh, animal uh, output. Then under animal husbandry, the housing system should provide space that is adequate, permitted freedom of movement and normal posture. Detail is given in Annex 3. Provide a comfortable environment, then adequate ventilation, animal dry and clean. So it comes under the animal husbandry. Then polypropylene or polycarbonate and stainless steel cages should be used for small animal. Monkey should be housed in cage made of steel and painted mild steel. So these factors comes under the animal husbandry. Then social environments are equally important in animal house facility. It includes all interaction among individual of a group or among those able to communicate. Animals are naturally terrific. Uh, territorial or common, communal and accordingly they should be housed singly or in a group. <clears throat> in grouping animal, it is important to take into account population density and ability to disperse, initiate familiarity among animals and age, sex and social rank. Population density can affect reproduction, metabolism, immune response, and behavioral. So social environment is very important. Then activity to the animal can be uh, make arrangement of activity. So this provide the locomotor pattern to express their natural habit. Artificial trees, rope, bars, and perches are appropriate for non-human primate. It has to be keep into the animal house so that they can do maximum activity. Then food, 
is important. It is palatable, non-contaminated and nutritionally adequate food should be supplied. Food should contain adequate nutrition with proper formulation and preparation. Then food should contain moisture, crude fiber, crude protein, essential vitamins, mineral, crude fat and carbohydrate for providing appropriate nutrition which is required for the animal. Then area in which the diet are stored or the food are stored should be kept clean from the insect. Diet should ideally be free from heavy metals. Then exposure to extreme of relative humidity can be prevented. And then bedding. Bedding is important. It should be absorbent, free from toxic chemicals. Then uh, cause, it will not cause irritant, injure animal or personal. It is take care. First, bedding should be removed and replaced periodically with uh, fresh material because if you keep the bedding for three to four days, the animal fecal material, urination can produces the microbial growth. In general, it is ideal to change the bedding twice a week or whether required. Then water facility is important. A fresh portable uncontaminated water is recommended. Periodic monitoring of microbial contamination is necessary. Nowadays, the TDS of the water is also important. Watering devices should be examined routinely for the their leakage or the growth of microorganism or rusting in the uh, that watering devices. Then sanitation and cleaning, the animal room, corridor, storage spaces and other areas should be properly cleaned with appropriate detergent, which is mandatory. Where animal waste is removed by housing or flushing, done twice a day. Then cages, bottle, nozzles, they all should be washed and sanitized, rinsing with water of at least 82.2 degrees centigrade. Deodorant or chemical agent should not be used into the uh, animal house facility. This cannot be used. Then waste disposal should be removed regularly and frequently. The most preferred method of waste disposal is incineration. Incinerators should be in the compliance with all central, state and local public health and pollution control board regulation. Pest control is to prevent, control or eliminate the presence of infectious by pest are essential in an animal house environment, which is required to control the development of pest. Record keeping is the important part. The type of record which is required are animal house staff record, health record of staff and animal, all SOPs and relevant purchase of animal breeding, all this required. Minutes of meeting record, record of animal purchase, experimental conduct, mortality, then clinical record of sick animal, training record of staff, water feed and bidding material, health monitoring record, rehabilitation record, all these records are necessary. Then SOP is important for operating process and SOP required all these things. So every instrument and every part of the animal house should having SOP, which gives the detail about the operating about that particular part. So all these things are required in the SOP. Then uh, this is about all the things uh, related to guideline on the website. Uh, you will get the complete detail about the guidelines. Under this guideline, there is one part Anastasia, which you can get from this uh, YouTube link and this uh, Anastasia video about Anastasia is already uploaded on the my preclinical pharmacology channel. Also regarding euthanasia, I have uploaded the separate video. One can go with this uh, video. You can find the beautiful explanation about Anastasia and euthanasia in the experimental animal. If you like this video and if you want such types of more video, please subscribe, like and share this video with your friends and those who are interested in biomedical sciences. Thank you once again for listening this.